The history of Bastrop begins with its great natural beauty. That beauty still exists today. The most historic small town in Texas was claimed by Spain and later ruled by Mexico. It was the Mexican government that gave Stephen F. Austin the right to establish a town. He did so in 1832. Austin named Bastrop for his friend, Philip Hendrik Nering Bergel, also known as the Baron de Bastrop. She's talking about me, you know. I was a bit of a scoundrel. And though I officially died in 1827, my spirit has been watching over the town of Bastrop ever since. Did you know that Bastrop is older than the Republic of Texas? In fact, a journal from 1691 mentions Bastrop's lost pines and a shallow spot where the Colorado River could be crossed. That's how Bastrop came to be. The old San Antonio Road came through here. It was called El Camino Real. The Royal Road, and that it was. A road that stretched from Louisiana all the way down to Mexico City. In those days, there were Comanches and other tribes who were known to attack Bastrop's earliest settlers. Comanches figure into Bastrop's most famous ghost story, and it's fitting that I tell it to you now because we're in front of the Wilbarger House, one of the oldest in Bastrop. The ghost story is about Josiah Wilbarger. He didn't live in this Wilbarger House. Josiah and four other men from Bastrop rode off in the direction of what is now Austin. On the way, they were surprised by Comanches. Two men were killed and two fled to a nearby home, but Josiah Wilbarger was left for dead, scalped and bleeding at the base of a tree. That night, Sarah Hornsby, a woman in the home where the survivors had fled, had a dream that Josiah was still alive. She persuaded the men to go back and look for him. Josiah Wilbarger was precisely where the woman dreamt he was. He was saved, lived out his life right here in this community. And here's a good juicy detail. Josiah's scalp never healed. He wore silk caps on his head that were made from his wife's wedding dress. That was 1833. Many here and elsewhere didn't want to live under Mexican rule. A Bastrop man, Richard Andrews, was the very first to die in... The Texas War for Independence! The Alamo. Several men from Bastrop died there, killed by General Santa Ana's men. Word was that the Mexican army was coming here, right here to Bastrop. The people fled. It was called... The Runaway Scrape. And it's a good thing they did run, because the Mexican soldiers came all right. Everyone in Bastrop was gone. Even Jimmy Curtis, who had become a little tipsy that day, had the good sense to leave. But Santa Ana had everyone riled up. It wasn't just the Alamo. In Goliad, when the Texans surrendered, Santa Ana killed them anyway. Men from Bastrop joined Sam Houston, Commander-in-Chief of the Texan Army at San Jacinto. Their mission? To defeat Santa Ana. There were about 60 of us from Bastrop, and we... The Texans defeated the Mexican Army. In just 18 minutes! The next day, Santa Ana himself was captured. You should have seen the look on his face when we took him. The Battle of San Jacinto took place on April the 21st, 1836. On that day, Texas became a republic. Bastrop was one of the original counties in the Republic of Texas. In 1839, Bastrop almost became the capital of Texas. Almost. Bastrop lost out to Waterloo, which you probably know as Austin. Being close to Austin helped Bastrop grow. We had cotton. We had lumber. And we had the river. In 1845, Texas became part of the United States. In 1853, the Bastrop Advertiser began publishing. It's the oldest weekly in Texas, still going strong. Settlers read the paper. Among them, German immigrants who came to farm, keep shop, raise their children. 
they built the casino, a social hall that still stands today. Those same German immigrants voted against secession when the Civil War came. But most of Texas was on the side of the Confederacy and, unfortunately, slavery. Even the students from the Bastrop Military Institute joined the Confederate Army. And in the middle of all of this, the heart of Bastrop burned down. It was 1862. It was a sad, sad time. The Civil War ended in 1865. The Union defeated the Confederates and slavery was dead. But in Texas, it was two years after the Emancipation Proclamation that word came here. That's what Juneteenth celebrates. The announcement in Texas that slavery was a thing of the past. A lot of building went on. In 1883, the new Bastrop County Courthouse went up. It replaced the one that had burned. And in 1886, the railroad arrived. We saw churches going up. In 1889, the first bank. And our famous Bastrop Opera House is still thriving today. And in 1890, we built a bridge. And in 1894, the first volunteer fire department was formed. They were so dashing. And in 1897, the ladies' the reading ladies circle. The ladies' reading circle came together, and it's still going on today as is the Harmony Club. A music appreciation group that saw its first members in 1901. Lignite mining began in Bastrop, and the miners who came from Mexico formed the Mexican Baptist Church. That was 1903. I can remember when this building went up, and this magnificent bell. Excuse me, I'm doing this narration. Well, get on with it then. Bastrop has a living, breathing history. You can walk through the streets of Bastrop and see where history was made. This inn, for instance, where travelers stop to eat and spend the night. Bastrop has wonderful, wonderful homes. It's been called an architectural feast. And if you look along Main Street, you'll see the grand old commercial buildings and the quaint storefronts. In 1855, this was a barber shop, and it's never been anything but. That's true of our neighborhood pharmacy, too. Need a prescription filled? Want an old-fashioned ice cream? Come to Lock Drug. Ha-ha! <laughs> Bastrop boasts a governor, Joseph D. Sayers. He lived on Wilson Street. His grave is here, too. The Kerr Center was built in 1914 to honor a prominent black family that included State Representative R.A. Kerr. Meanwhile, nature intervened. Sometimes the beauty of our river turned to fury. There were floods in 1869, 1913, 1935, and 1938. The Lower Colorado River Authority came to the rescue and put dams upriver to the west and tame the flow of the mighty Colorado. During the 1930s, the CCC built the native stone buildings in Bastrop State Park. The park itself was opened in 1937. It has been designated a National Historic Landmark. In 1942, Camp Swift opened its gates. Soldiers from Camp Swift settled here. Locals still call the identical little homes that cropped up during World War II the new addition. The Kerr Center became a USO hall for black soldiers. The center was used for dances and socials. Yes, my eyes come over. A blues legend, the Grey Ghost, played there. He was born here in Bastrop. Roosevelt Williams was his real name. The musical tradition in Bastrop continues to this day. Bastrop rocks on. In 1965, the LCRA built the Sim Gideon Power Plant, and along with it, Lake Bastrop. They gave us 900 acres of water. You can find out more about Bastrop when you call the Chamber of Commerce. Or the Bastrop Visitor Center. There's so much history, so much to see and do. Bastrop is just 30 minutes from Austin and well worth the drive. It's a place where the past and the present meet. <laughs>